Hello, today we're going to look at client state parameters, client scripts, and page events in UI Builder. Uh, so to start our scenario here, this is a page that uh, if you've watched some of the previous videos uh, should look kind of familiar. Uh, but we've got a couple of containers on here and then we have this component that's a simple list component. And the simple list component uh, is showing all of my open to do's. Uh, so you can see we've got a filter on that component uh, where the user is me and the state is open. What we want to do today is we want to add a couple of buttons to this page that let us toggle from uh, open to do's uh, to completed to do's. Uh, and there are a lot of different ways we could do that in UI Builder. It's really versatile and powerful. What we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of buttons to the page and those buttons are going to control uh, the list here. So there are a number of steps we have to go through to do this. And we're going to touch on, you know, as I said, client state parameters, client scripts and page events. And hopefully uh, this helps understand how those how those things all fit together. So the first thing we're going to do is, you know, I showed that filter uh, as always with our properties on our components. Uh, we can uh, use dynamic data binding instead of manually hard coding things. And uh, we are going to do that. But first, I'm going to set a new client state parameter. And uh, you'll hear these referenced as client state parameters or client state variables. Uh, but basically, you know, this is similar to building web components uh, where you're managing, you know, the state of your component. And in this case, this is just uh, different state variables on our page that we can then man manipulate and reference uh, in different places. So this one, we're going to call this to do filter. Pretty straightforward. Uh, and we're going to give it <clears throat> We're going to give it an, an initial value that's going to match what's currently in that filter. Uh, I have uh, cheated a little bit since this is more of a demo and I have mine here. So basically we're going to do state is open and then user dynamic. If you've ever used the, you know, user is me, uh, this is what that encoded query looks like. So we've got this here. You can see that my to do filter now has this value. So let's make sure that that is the right value. And instead of the filter, we're going to uh, change into the dynamic data binding. And it should have this in my page already. Yeah, so state and then to do filter. So I'm going to click on that. And it shows me my five. So there's a sixth one that's completed. So I know that since it's showing five, uh, that's the right thing here. So I'm going to go ahead and save that page before we keep going. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to create a page event uh, that's going to call a client script that's going to update uh, that uh, client state parameter. So I'm going to do that uh, by clicking on body. And uh, in, in our last video, we did something like this. Uh, but I'm going to come in and add a handled event. Uh, so there are different places to call events. And we'll look at uh, later on, you know, why we why we're going to do it here. Uh, but this is going to be uh, filter, uh, let's do capital because that's what I did in other places. And the event name is going to be all caps anyway. Uh, so it is going to have a payload field. And the payload field is just going to be the state, right? So we want uh, user is dynamic me is always going to be the, the parameter there. And then the other parameter is going to be state. So this is going to be the thing that we're switching. Uh, and sure, we'll give it a label. It's going to be a string because it's going to be draft, open, completed, or canceled, I think, are our four states here. So let's click Add. And you can see here, I now have this filter to do handled event. And then on my page event mapping, I now have this filter to do uh, event uh, that I can add an event handler to. But before I add an event handler, our event handler is going to call a client script. So I want to go ahead and create my client script so we can call it from this event handler. So the way to work with client scripts in UI Builder is to click on the little client script icon down at the bottom left. It looks like a closing script bracket. Uh, so I'm going to click on that. I'm going to add a new client script. We'll go ahead and call it filter to do's because that's what we're calling all of our filters here. And then in the script, we can see I've got a I've got a few different things here. So I know that uh, my, you know, my property 
here for filter to do, if I click on that, it's passing a payload that has a state in it. So I think I'm gonna want payload.state. And I think if I go API dot, uh, no, not API. If I say event, uh, then we get the payload here, right? So I'm gonna get the payload and then uh, we don't have that in there because I'm not calling it from, uh, I'm not calling it yet, but it's going to be state. Uh, so this should give us our value. So let's say uh, filter state is the state. And then uh, the other thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to say API dot uh, set state um, so this is confusing because we're, we're using the state of the to-do record, uh, but what we're talking about here is this client state parameter. So set state is what I want to use if I want to set a client state parameter value. So we're going to say set state, and then it's telling me I need the name of the state and then what I want to set it to. Uh, so I think that that state was... Uh, let's say it was filter, let's say it was to-do filter. And then I'm going to set that to, uh, we're going to cheat a little bit here, and I'm going to grab it from off screen. Uh, but I actually want to set that to the user dynamic and then state equals. And then we will say filter state autocomplete. All right, so we're setting the state of the to do filter. Uh, so let's click into that uh, to do filter. It is lowercase. Okay. All right. So what we need to do now is we need to connect this client script. And I apologize, I know there's a lot of steps here. We need to connect the client script uh, to my filter to do page event. So we're going to use an event handler on that filter to do page event. I'm going to click on that. It's going to bring up all these different options, but under scripts, I have filter to do's. And I'm going to add that. So what we've done now is we've said, hey, whenever uh, I fire this filter to do event on this page, I'm gonna call this client script and that's gonna set the state uh, of my client state parameter to you know, whatever I have set. So that's kind of our first step here. We're, we've wired all this together. Now we need to go in and uh, add some buttons to actually make this work. So I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to save uh, because I save early and often uh, because sometimes I don't and then it comes back and, and bites me. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another container down here underneath. And then in that container, uh, let's make it two column. And in this column, I'm going to add a button. And that button is going to be called show completed to do's. Uh, and let's go ahead. And in this column, I want to justify um, space evenly. I want to align center. There we go. That looks good. Show completed to do's. Uh, and then we're going to connect this to our page event. So I'm going to say, we're going to call our page level event handler. So I'm going to call that filter to do event handler. And then here, my the value of the completed state is complete. So I'm going to hit add. And then we're going to come in and add a button here as well. And we will call this uh, label is show open to do's. And we are going to call the same filter to do handler, and this is going to be open. 
Uh, and let's go ahead and align the center. And I think this should work. Let's go ahead and try it. So by default, we should be seeing open to-dos, which I think we are. If I say show completed to-dos, it changes it, and this is our complete to-do. And then if I say show open to-dos, it shows open. If I redo this, it stays open. We Go back to complete. If I click it again, it's complete. So just a quick recap, because we did a lot of things uh, in a short amount of time here. Uh, we used this uh, client state parameter, right? So this is a page state value uh, that we bound uh, to this component. And then we are manipulating this from these two components. So I'm, I'm sharing values between all of these components through this client state parameter. And I could have done this uh, a couple of different ways. Like from my to-do button, I could have added a, a new event handler that actually updates that client state parameter, but I would have had to put in the entire, you know, user is dynamic, me, and then the state that I wanted to end up with. And, you know, I end up duplicating things. And at this point, if I decide that, you know, hey, my app has gotten more complex, I have more parameters that I need to put in, uh, I can just come and update that in the client script or in the one page parameter. So really a, a good practice to follow from this is uh, define these, uh, these page events and then consume them from multiple places instead of, you know, doing a lot of work from these, uh, you know, button events and things like that. Uh, thanks for watching.